Code Signal, RK Digit's product. Hello everyone, my name is Josh, and I'll be solving Digit's product by Code Signal. So, given an integer product, find this pulse positive greater than zero, with integer product of whose digits is equal to product, and if there's no such integer, return negative one instead. So, for if we had the product of 12, it's going to be 26, because 2 and 6, it's going to be equal to 12. Now, if it's 19, it's output should be negative one, because the only values that equal 19 is one and 19 itself. But since we want those to be one digit values, one, that 19 cannot be broken down further into like, you know, let's say two, eight or three and four. And it's gonna be one and 19 repeatedly. That value can never work, so it's gonna be negative one. So in that case, if we want to solve this one, I think there's a few things we wanna consider. We want to solve this problem while the product is greater than nine. Now, I think there's some test cases down below that describe, like for example, let's, um, let's see if we could find it. Okay, we have those two test examples right here. But let me see, if it's zero, we have that small edge case that we want to consider. If product does equal zero, we want to return 10. Else, if product is, I think there's another edge case that can help me explain something else important. So 13, that's another one that can't be working. If it's one, if it's product is one, it's going to be one. Look at this pattern right here. And if it's nine, 10, huh. Okay, so I think this is the only pattern we can consider. But something important to notice also is that if it's just a product of itself, like one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, if it's less than 10 basically, then we want to return the product itself. That's another pattern that we want to consider. These are the two edge cases that we want to consider. Now, if the product is greater than nine, what we want to do is we want to find the single digit that is divisible by so that we can um, we can see if we can create that product, the digit, the smallest positive integer where its product of digits is equal to product. Now, in that case, we want to see if we want to create the original equals product because at the end of this, if we'll just say we when we go through all the digits right here, like let's we'll just say um, since when we're trying to find the correct, we want to find a digit that is divisible by by going from nine to let's we'll just say nine to two. If we can't find any digit that's divisible by from nine and to two, two to nine, that means that if the pro if the product remains equal to the original, let's see we're going to execute and update the product value, and we're also going to yeah when we execute and update the product value because once we find the number that's divisible by, we just want to work with the remaining digits to find what other other digits it can have to contribute to the product of that target value. That means that if it remains the same, no changes have been done, that means it's not possible to find that value that is that can contribute to that product. It's just gonna have no such integer, so it's gonna be negative one. So I had to make sure I return negative one right there. And of course, we have to define the new product that we're searching for. So I, I'll call this one smallest positive. I call it small positive just to keep it consistent. It's going to start as equal to zero. And once we find that perfect value, and how we're going to find if it's a perfect product value, that's when if product modulus, which means we're going to find the remainder of product modulus of f, that means it's perfectly divisible. If it's if it's perfectly divisible, it's going to have a remainder of zero. That's what modulus does. It finds the remainder once you divide it by f. In this case, it's going to be zero. In that case, if it's perfectly if it's perfect, if it's divisible, damn, okay, if it's divisible, then we want to, the product, we're going to take the small positive, and it's going to be equal to small positive times 10 plus, plus product divided by F. Now, you might be wondering why did I do this? Here, hold for a second. I'm going to call this int new val, new di next digit. It's equal to product divided by f. I'll make this more explicit. You might be wondering why I did this. I did this because um, once you go from 9 to 1, the reason why I went through this order instead of like 1 through 9 is because 
when we find that small next digit value, that one's going to be appended to the front in order to ensure that it's going to be the smallest positive integer. That's why I did it this way. And this one shifts whatever the current values that you already appended into your smallest positive value to be in a place higher so that um, it could still remain to be the smallest positive integer. For example, if I did if I squished these around and I did 1 through 9, it's going to be 60, 62. And 62 is not the smallest positive. It's supposed to be 26. This ensures that order of digits that we can get the smallest value possible. All right, so int next digit equals product divided by f, small positive equals small positive times 10. And in that case, once we do that, now we're going to update the product is equal to f. And this is why we have this product is greater than 9, because we're going to keep going on until we have all the possible smallest digits in this answer. And we're going to return the small positive value, which is say it's already less than 9, and there's still some remainder left. We're going to continue this on to be small times 10 plus whatever is left, which is going to be the product. Now, something else to consider. Let me think about this. Um, now, sometimes a small positive value, once we divide it by the largest digit um, that we know that's going to be in the right side of the value, we want to break it down even further. What does that mean? So the small positive value, let's just say that the next digit, product divided by f, is going to be um, 25. You can see here there's possibilities right here, like let's just see if we could go on. 13, 6, uh, let's see. Uh, this is a good example, 243. So if I go from, so 243 divided by 9, that's going to be 27. This 27 is too big, and it, it's even though it's noted as the small, smallest next digit value, we can't just append that. We have to break it down even further into 3 of 9. How do we do that? We could call it recursively, and since that the answer could be still kind of small constraints, I think it's still safe to use recursion. So I could do small positive, it's going to be equal to, it's going to go through this whole process again of digits product, and we're going to call the next digit. Um, oh, sorry, this next digit should be right here, because we're updating that next digit value to what we ever we break it down with digits product, and there you go. Now, if we run the test, it should probably pass. I'm going to go over in summary what I did. Huh. What did we do wrong? Ah, now, let's just say we try to break down that next digit value, right? And it's still it's still too large. Let's just say that it's there's no possibility. Let's just say we get a 1 in 19 situation. What should we do? If next digit is equal to negative 1, we want to return negative 1. That means that we cannot break it down even further. We tried breaking it down, it kind of worked, but that next product, since it's more than 9, we should return negative 1. We cannot find the smallest positive number. So in that case, return negative 1. Oh. Wait for a second, guys. Okay, once I find a digit, I should have break the loop because I want to indicate that, okay, we with that current set of digits, I already found the smallest digit between two to nine, and I want to do it again for the next value. But instead, I kept executing to find there's any other digits after that. I did not denote that as such to break this for loop, so that's where my answer was faulty. So now if I run tests here, this should work better. Awesome. Now if I hit submit, it should pass. Okay, this is a bit complex. I wouldn't even say it's medium in my opinion. I felt like this is like medium to hard. So don't feel guilty if you couldn't solve it because it took me several tries too. So we want to deal with those edge cases. If it's zero, it has to be 10. If the product's less than 10, we should just return the product itself. We want to find the smallest positive number. We initialize it as zero. And when we do that, we're given the product itself. We had, to keep it um, we had to keep solving it until that remaining product is less than 10 because we want a single digit value once we append it to the right side of that smallest positive number. And that's denoted by this sort of algorithm right here. We take whatever values is left and we shift it left while we add the product at the very end, which is less than 9, less than 10, 9 or less, so it should work fine. Now, we denote to make sure that, let's just say that it's not possible to break it down. If the original is equal to the product, if it still remains, no matter how we search for digits between 2 through 9, 
if it still remains the same, we should return negative 1. In that case, there's no small positive numbers that can equal the product. And um, in that case, return negative 1. Now, if we find the digits here and we find, like, okay, um, we find what it's divisible by, and we still see that next digit, um, once we go to the digits product, once we, go, once we find out that that next digit cannot be broken down also, we return negative 1. But if it can be broken down, we shift all those possible values to the left, and we add that next digit at the end. Now, um, if, if we, it could be broken down further recursively, like if it's a big digit like 27, but it could be broken down to 3 and 9, we call it again, and that 27 could be broken down to the smallest possible digits um, per what you see there. And now once we break it down, we have the remainder of that product that we want to try to solve and we reassign it right here. Um, it keeps going through that process. And see, once we solve, we find that divisible value. We want to break this for loop because we want to solve it with a fresh, fresh set of digits. We don't want to start from whatever digit it was divisible by. We need to start from the very beginning of nine and going under. It's a complex question, and you know, I think if there's a better way to solve it, please let me know in the comments below. I think this is pretty nice because it, it has a small space complexity of like about 04, 03. Every time it's calling a recursive function itself, which I say keeps breaking it down until, um, until um, you know, I think, I mean, it's bounded by these constraints, so I don't think it should be that big when you want to use a recursive function. And um, even though it has this while loops and for loops here, I'd say it's probably like, let's just say worst case scenario, 999, nine, 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 I suppose. Uh, I don't know. I think, I mean, I'll just... I didn't really look do a PhD thesis on this, but I think it's going to be about time complexity of like nine times nine times nine worst case scenario. Anyways, guys, um, I have no more jokes on what I'll give you if you like and subscribe. But if you do like and subscribe, I'll direct message you a joke that I think off the top of my head. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you a gold bar with it too, and a bunch of chocolates, Toblerone. Just kidding. <laughs> See you guys.